Okay, best quest game sounds like clickbait, because let's be honest, it is. But I promise I'll bring this title full circle after I've explained why this game right here, a game that you likely either have A, never seen before, or B, have seen before, but don't care for, or C, have seen before, have played it, and know exactly what I'm talking about when I say it's the best quest game. This is Racket Club, a game that recently released for Quest headsets on PC VR, and is in my opinion, the accumulation of everything that makes a great VR experience. Sure, when you think of high octane engaging VR titles, you think of Pavlov, Gorilla Tag, Half-Life Alex, Boneworks, Echo VR, Rust in Peace, I'll never forgive you, Baldy Bug, how can you take my job from me? On the surface, to most average VR users, this game looks nothing special. But for those of you with any VR experience, I mean actual VR experience, those of you who have actually experienced a range of different VR games will likely have already clocked on to what looks so engaging about this. Here's the deal. This game is $20, and the Oculus slash Meta store has a two-hour refund policy. I'm going to tell you why you should buy this game. You should then buy it, play it, and then if you think I'm wrong, refund the game, come back to this video and comment i hate you get hip you have the cognitive ability of an autistic monkey and get them in or you could like and subscribe to fill your sub box full of incompetently edited videos by an autistic monkey on get them <laughs> Just to be clear, I liked the look of this game when I saw it at the MetaQuest Gaming Showcase and decided to buy it when I saw it had released on the Quest Store. This video is not sponsored, and I am not receiving any money for talking about this game. I wish I was. My Super's engine decided to rob me at gunpoint after my TGVs failed. This game has become one of my most played VR games of all time in just a matter of days. And I feel like if I don't talk about it and find other people who understand what's so great about an otherwise pretty basic looking VR game by making a video talking about it, I'm gonna literally f***ing die. <laughs> On the surface, this looks like tennis, or squash, or pickleball. See, this game combines elements of all of these traditional racket-based games into one properly suited for VR. As games like tennis require large play space and usually require running from one side of the court to the other, something that you can't do in your likely small living room or bedroom. Hence why the only popular VR ball-based sport is 11 table tennis, as this all fits within your play space. The developers of Racket Club Resolution Games have essentially created their own sport to utilize the smaller play space that most VR users have. With the glass walls either side of the court, the ball is kept within your reach. This allows for some really fun mechanics as you try and ricochet the ball off of the glass to keep your opponents on their feet. This isn't to say that you can play this locked in the trunk of my Subaru after I rob you for a head gasket after mine breaks. <laughs> I mean, you still need some play space, as even with this smaller court size, you do still have to move a fair amount. Because of this gameplay, the game does lend itself naturally to a more native VR headset like the Quest. I'm sure this game is great on PC VR too, but as someone who owns both, I'm playing on Quest. No Quest. Tion's asked. Mark Zuckerberg is my father. These VR tuned mechanics and the option of 1v1 gameplay or 2v2 gameplay along with the level progression makes this one of the most competitive VR experiences I've ever experienced. After my first play session, I was literally getting up in the middle of the night to go practice my serve after I got monumentally wrecked by the Chinese. <laughs> See, the reason this game is so compelling is its skill ceiling. Naturally, players like the aforementioned Chinese can hone in their serve, return shots, ricochet shots, all in a fully-fledged single-player career mode, a personal training area, or public lobbies. The amount of cohesive, fully-functioning, professionally-built features this game has shipped with is very impressive given the state that the majority of VR games ship in. Currently, there's enough new and casual players to keep the game's public lobbies enjoyable for newcomers, but I am slightly concerned that as the influx of players slowly drops off naturally, the remaining player base will be so good that any new players will be turned away by this skill difference. I love that you actually have to socialize and ask other players to come over to your court to join you in a game, and it acts as a natural icebreaker and promotes some great mid-game conversations. Right, I'll tell you what, you fat little c you're boring. You don't sound Nigerian at all. The majority of players are all friendly and more than happy to teach you the ropes if you're new. Every single person who watches your videos are fucking stupid. They're fucking ignorant little c**ts. And you're just a fucking r**k. Is also currently not filled with screaming children. And just to cover my ass here, at least according to YouTube, the majority of my audience is about the same age as me. So after this likely very underperforming video releases, don't blame my ass for all the kids in the lobbies. But if there is an uptick in schizophrenic, ketamine addicted 20 year old chimpanzees, then perhaps I'm to blame. Somebody order pancakes. I my biggest gripe with the majority of games on Quest is the lack of progression. I'll never forget arriving at the tower in Destiny 2 and seeing players with hundreds of more hours than me rock up in their immaculately customized ships 
completely dripped out in high rarity gear. Their skill level and the hours that they put into the game was represented by the way that they looked. It gave me the drive to grind away at the game to eventually one day have that same impact on other new players. Most VR games out right now don't have these sort of progression systems in place, instead opting for microtransactions, making the majority of cosmetics meaningless outside of just showing off how much money you've spent on a virtual item. It doesn't encourage you to play more. Even if the gameplay is great, you can't help but shake that feeling that you're making zero progression in a game when someone who's played for five minutes and has $20 can copy your entire look. This may seem insignificant to a lot of you guys, but this is something that I think Rocket Club does do really well. When you start the game, you're gridded with a full character customization. It's surprisingly in-depth while still being simple and straightforward, allowing you to quickly get into the gameplay, but you have a few clothing options from the start, but the remaining options are all locked behind levels, not a paywall. This, at least early on, added some stakes to each game that I played as I was chasing the highest amount of XP possible to unlock this sick dragon hoodie. And then when I saw other players with the clothing that I hadn't yet unlocked and I knew needed a higher level to get, I knew that I may have to play significantly more cautiously as I knew they had put more time into the game than I had. However, currently there's only six levels and I maxed out my character within just a couple of days. So I would like to see more levels added in updates and more cosmetics to unlock along the way. I'm sure the developers will add this eventually. The game has only just come out after all. There's also a range of different rackets all with their own attributes and initially I f***ing hated this idea. I mean, I'd rather your performance in the game to be determined by your personal skill rather than the power of your f***ing racket. But as I did unlock and play around with higher level rackets that had more power or more spin, I realized that this actually created some pretty fun gameplay opportunities. But where I think this falls apart a bit is at higher levels you can unlock some arguably pretty grossly overpowered rackets that in my opinion ruin a lot of the dynamics of the game and turn every game into just essentially a sniper rifle match. Part of what makes the game so fun is the intense rallies that you can get into but at high levels with these higher power rackets it starts to just boil down to whoever can produce the most obnoxious spin induced serve that is near impossible to counter without the ball being sent back to the Chinese. I think that the high level rackets either need to be nerfed or just removed completely as I can't imagine how frustrating this must be to encounter as a new player. <laughs> From an art style perspective, I think this game looks perfect for what it is. It's simplistic, it's colorful, approachable, and allows for some great but simplistic customization. Graphically, the game looks pretty nice too, at least on the Quest 3, with some nice neutral lighting and some clean textures. But where I think the game is in desperate need of visual improvement is the resolution. Past a couple of meters, the game's resolution drops off significantly and can make focusing on a ball that's on the other side of the court a bit of a strain on the eyes. And for a game that looks this simplistic, at least on the Quest 3, it really should be higher resolution than this. I assume part of this is due to the lobbies being able to hold up to 15 people at a time and trying to keep performance at a steady 120 hertz, but holy sh**, I've not seen resolution this low on the Quest 3 in any other title. The lag can also be pretty atrocious too, which is naturally a pretty big problem for a game revolving around precisely hitting a tennis ball. Other players' bodies also look pretty jank. Most VR games have this down by now, but the physicality of other players' avatars are all over the place and don't look remotely representative of how that player is standing in real life. I am sure that all of the above will be fixed in time. Again, the game did just release. Racket Club combines everything that makes a good native VR game into a good native VR game. A colorful social hub, addictive active gameplay, a skill ceiling, progression, customization, single player, easy to use menus, and a friends list. Racket Club, despite some early hiccups, is what a VR game should be. It's a game that can only exist in VR or real life if you can set up a court like this, obviously. Racket Club is f***ing awesome. It's a huge breath of fresh air during a time when so many developers are set on turning VR games into 360 degree flat screen games in a desperate, sad attempt to be accessible to non-VR players. This is actually a VR game made by VR gamers. I would buy a headset just to play Racket Club. It's that good. And it's the perfect example of what this medium can do. Go buy the game. Or don't. I mean, I don't have any money left either. I don't blame you. I'm a mama boyfriend. I'm a little husband. I was the man of the house when it wasn't.